it is the interest expense that creates the interest tax shield for a levered firm now to determine the value of interest tax shield for the purpose of determining overall value of the firm we need to compute the present value of all the streams of the annual interest tax yields how it can be determined we can see it with the help of an example we know that a levered firm pays cash flows to its investors more than the cash flows provided to in its investors by an unlevered firm and these are the cash flows in the form of interest tax shields that a levered firm can give to its investors but a un but an unlevered firm cannot so this means that the levered firm's cash flows to the investors are the sum of live unlevered cash flows to the investors plus the interest tax shields uh, this equation can be pictured with the help of a diagram where we we see the cash flows of an unlevered firm in the form of ebit depicted in a block colored in green and in the uh, next we have unlevered earnings in blue and the corresponding tax in the pink but if the firm is levered then this tax is split into two forms a considerable portion is paid to the investors in the form of interest tax shield so the a, a part of tax paid to the investors of the levered firm in the form of interest tax shield which is not available to the investors of an unlevered firm this means that the interest payment which are paid to the fir firm's investors reduces the firm's tax obligations and this reduction in the tax obligation which is a gain for the investors of the firm that reduction or saving is termed as the interest tax shield we know that the cash flows of a levered firm are equal to the sum of the cash flows of an unlevered firm plus the interest tax shield and the law of one price says that if it is true then the same must be true for the present value of these cash flows so modifying little uh, the mm1 proposition with the presence of taxes it can be said that a levered firm's total value exceeds over the unlevered firm's value owing to the present value of the interest tax shields this means that the value of levered firm is equal to the sum of value of unlevered firm and the present value of the interest tax shield now this tax saving or the interest tax shield benefit depends upon uh, the amount of debt the amount of interest payment and the debt period now how to determine the value of interest tax shield uh, we have an example where we have loan value of 2 billion dollars annual interest payment of 100 million dollars time period of the debt is 10 years and marginal tax rate is 35% we have real risk free rate of interest of 5% so the interest tax shield will be the product of annual interest payment multiplied by the uh, corporate tax rate so corporate tax rate is 35 percent and the annual interest payment is 100 million dollar the interest tax shield comes to 35 million dollar these are the annual interest shields if we want to determine the present value of these interest shields we need to apply the formula of NOT and that NOT formula is applied here where we have to multiply the annual interest tax shield with the present value of interest factor of NOT for at 5% for 10 years and this gives us the value of 270 million that 270 million dollar is the present value of the interest tax shield uh, note that we have not used the amount of debt in this computation of present value of interest tax shield 
because uh, from accounting point of view the loan amount is not deductible only the interest expense is allowed to deduct from the earnings and how, what will happen if we want to determine the interest tax shield with the existence of permanent debt till now we are assuming that the interest tax shields based on interest rates tax rates the amount of debt and the period of debt are certain but in practice uh, these are rarely certain rather these are generally uncertain because firms interest payments vary due to changes in three things like firms policy on its outstanding debt rate of interest on the firms debt and the risk of firms default in paying interest payment to the debt holders also a firm's marginal tax rate can also influence due to the changes in the firm uh, firm's tax code or the tax rate and the firm's income bracket so these are the factors that can have a considerable effect on the interest tax shield of a particular firm generally firms uh, try to uh, retain a debt on permanent basis and they like to pay interest there on on annual basis so this means that they exist a permanent sort of debt the firm like to maintain in its balance sheet more realistically taking an example of short term debt a firm likes to pay its short term debts with a newer issuance of an other short term debt this means that this principal amount of short term debt will never be paid rather it will be refinanced once the existing debt is likely to be matured this means that effectively it is a permanent debt generally a large firm a large firm's balance sheet carry permanent debt as in the form of certain amount of debt every year and from year to year it is carried on as a firm's business policy this is known uh, in fact this uh, uh, the firm borrows new debt to pay the existing all or the older debt the assumption behind this debt policy is that the firm maintains a fixed amount of debt on its balance sheet rather than the amount that varies from year to year or from on its every debt contract now we have an example to understand the valuation of interest tax shield in the presence of permanent debt we assume that a firm borrows risk free debt symbolized by the capital d in order to keep it permanently in its balance sheet the firm's marginal tax rate is the tau c and the risk free interest rate is equal to rf now the yearly tax uh, interest tax shield is the product of corporate tax rate risk free rate rf and the amount of debt which is d now if we determine the present value of this interest tax shield we need to determine the amount of uh, to discount the amount of interest over the risk free rate this means that we need to uh, develop a formula carrying the corporate tax rate with the multiplication of annual interest expense and divided by the risk free rate now the interest is the product of rf or the risk free rate and the capital d now sol uh, cancelling the rf the resulting amount is equal to the c or the capital rate and the debt so simply the present value of interest tax shield on permanent debt is equal to the product of the corporate tax and the amount of debt the this computation assumes that the debt is a uh, risk free and the rf or the risk free rate is constant throughout the debt period and if we assume that the debt is fairly priced in the open market then the market value of debt is the product of the 
प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंसेस और द फ्यूचर इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट्स नाउ इफ अ फर्म हैज कांस्टेंट मार्जिनल टैक्स रेट देन द वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट टैक्स शील्ड फॉर अ परमानेंट रेट डेट विल बी इक्वल टू द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स रेट एज अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द फ्यूचर इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट दिस मींस दैट द a uh, present value of the interest tax yield on permanent debt is the product of the corporate tax rate and the future interest payment and uh, by solving this equation we can reduce it to the uh, product of corporate tax rate and the amount of debt or the d now uh, the implication of this new equation is that the product of corporate tax rate and the debt uh, shows magnitude of the interest tax yield this means that for a 30% corporate tax rate this means that for every $1 in the newer amount of debt the firm value will be increased by every 35 cents 